So today I am with George, one of our mentees in the Serviced Accommodation Academy, who has gone from zero to seven high cash flowing properties. We're gonna do a deep dive, sharing with you some amazing tips and tricks on how you can start, scale, and grow your high cash flowing property portfolio. If you are new to my channel, make sure you smash the subscribe button, give me a like, and of course, leave me a question or comment below and I will personally answer them for you. Great, so let's get into it. Great to have you with us, George. Thanks for coming onto the show. Uh, really good to have you here. So we're gonna be talking all things rent to rent service accommodation. You've gone from zero to seven high cash flowing properties. Um, could you just explain to us and the viewers, uh, what were you doing before you made that decision to go into property? Uh, I had a small business supplying fine parts. Okay, and um, why did you make the decision to jump into property? Just didn't enjoy it, that's the change. Okay, so just feeling frustrated with it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, great. So so why, why serviced accommodation rent to rent? Why not commercial conversions or HMOs or buying deals? What was it about serviced accommodation rent to rent that appealed to you? Obviously startup capital and obviously the cash flow. Okay. Basically, six great. two boxes. Great, so cash flow, minimum cash in, maximum cash out. Yeah. Uh, talk to us about that, Ross, because it's one of your strap lines, minimum cash in, maximum cash out. What, what do you even mean by that? Yeah, I think what people look at when they consider traditional property investing, it's about finding the worst house on the street, the one that they can't get rid of, the one that smells, the one that people don't want. It's about sort of targeting units like that, adding the value and making your money look that's traditional property investing let's not get confused this is completely different this is creative property investing it's about spending nothing to earn everything it's about controlling the asset to make your money with that asset okay interesting but um you know you hear i'll, I'll play devil's advocate uh, <laughs> rent to rent's illegal ross it's subletting ross it doesn't work ross there's no way you can do that ross what, what do you say to those uh, people yeah, so there's a lot of misconceptions with rent to rent. Let's just be extremely blunt about this. I've been in the industry for 13 years. If it wasn't legal, if there wasn't any legal footing with what I was doing, I'd have been dragged through the courts and over the coals a lot of times <laughs> over the last 13 years. So look, quite simply, it's about having the correct legal framework to sublet to clients. If you take on the contracts as is, a lot of these contracts prevent subletting, but if you can get permission within the contract you have with an agent, landlord or a developer, that you have permission to sublet, it's completely illegal. Uh, it's completely legal <laughs> and above board. We're governed by the ombudsman, so we need to make sure everything's correct. Great, so, so in, this, in essence, as a rent to renter, we, we don't actually say I'm a rent to renter, we use the word relocations. But as a company that's been set up, you know, let's say it's a limited company, you're set up as a relocation, you are literally renting a property from an existing landlord, you pay that landlord their fixed rent, and then the landlord allows you with the right legal framework to then sublet and use it as a, a HMO or in George's case, uh, serviced accommodation. Exactly that. So with, with me, like there's lots of avenues of rent to rent that you can explore, but one of the most lucrative, the, the, the quickest route to market, and for me, definitely the most profitable is serviced accommodation, which is providing an alternative to like a, a hotel or a B&B &B and offering an alternative to leisure guests, to contractors to provide a night by night accommodation. Great, good. So, so George, from, from the moment of deciding that you was gonna get into property, you would have come across Assets for Life, you know, me or Ross, you came on the three day serviced accommodation boot camp. Uh, you then invested into the Serviced Accommodation Academy. From from your training, how long was it before you got the first deal accepted and over the line? Uh, a few, I had a few knockbacks, a few yeah. months, I'd say five months possibly. Yeah, that's, that's pretty quick. That's pretty quick, isn't it? And, and how long have you been doing it now? Well, 18 months the business has been set up, but I suppose running properly, just short of nine coming up to eight, nine, something like okay, that. So, My so, maths is not great, obviously. Right, so, so, so the first deal, obviously, is for a lot of people the hardest. Uh, in your case, it was, you know, give or take five months. Um, how, how did it feel when you got that first deal over the line? 
yeah, it was good, but I had all the excitement with the other ones I got let down on. So. <laughs> <laughs> and so when it was signed, it was like, yeah, finally. So yeah, it was it was good. Oh, so yeah. you came close before then? Did yeah, you? a number of times, yeah. yeah right, yeah. so what, offer accepted or they said, and what, 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 give us an example of what went wrong with one of those. Um, one, I had a family member get involved, a, a father and a brother-in-law who didn't quite understood and just sort of stuck his oar in. And two were just sort of, I don't know, don't really know. It was contract issues, not happy about right. this, that, and just went down to the traditional route. That's okay. probably me not explaining it properly. Yeah, it comes with experience yeah, as well, doesn't yeah, it? The, yeah. I, I'm sure the way you talk to a landlord or a letting agent now is very different, to, different to, to, yeah. to 18 months ago. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Great, so you get your first one over the line, you're like, this, this really does work. You then go from one to seven deals. How, how was you able to really scale that in quite a short space of time? Um, Yes, I JV'd with some people, a couple of people, well, one person who's on the on the course as well. And that's it, yeah. Uh, JV in terms of they put the money in? Yeah. All oh, right, okay. So you have used other people's money to fund your deals, your initial startup. Yeah, and then I did end up getting an investor as well, just from uh, a friend's brother, actually. Okay, great. Uh, that's amazing. So you're at seven deals now. Um, who, who would you say your clientele is? Contractors mainly, okay. majority of yeah, contractors. And why do you go contractors, say over holiday makers? <laughs> <laughs> the contractors are nice and easy. They yeah. are nice and easy. They're quite understanding. You you don't tend to find you got Wi-Fi issues until a leisure guest goes in. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, but no, they're, they're, yeah, it's just nice and easy. Okay. And they, yeah, tidy fellas. Yeah, and and uh, obviously they, they they pay good rates. Yeah. I suppose for contractor, you know, you, you've got a lot of experience in this. You know, what's your being experienced with contractors? What, why, why are contractors so on it with serviced accommodation units now, rather than staying at a travel lodge or a Premier Inn or, or a local hotel? What, what, what's going on there? So, so naturally, we can look at both markets and we can cater both. But I tend to focus purely on the contractors, and it just comes down to this: there is no. Um, seasonal period with, when it comes to contractors. If you can imagine from this, pretty much from December the 15th to around the, the 5th of Jan, that is the only quiet period you get all year round when you focus on contractors. Unfortunately, if you focus on le leisure stays, let's say, I don't know, Brighton, Blackpool, like ultimately during the summer months, it's phenomenal. It drops off a cliff during those winter months. And unless you've got contractors to support those winter months, you know, leisure stays and holiday destinations can be quite a tough place. Mm. So for me, I prefer the contractors. A, they're all year round. B, less hassle. C, I find they come back again and again and again. So repeat bookings that I can do it directly. So there's multiple benefits to contractors and that can give yeah. you an insight into some of them. Okay, so let, let's say someone's tuning into this. They get their first apartment, their first rent to rent over the line. Typically, a rent-to-rent -rent unit will, will make 1,000 to 1,500 pounds per month profit, some a bit more, some a bit less. How the hell do you find these contractors? How, how, how do you do that? So like, there's multiple different ways to, to do it. Now, naturally, over the last 13 years, I picked up a lot of tips and tricks on how to approach contractors, grab their attention and get the business. But we teach you how to leverage uh, the likes of Booking.com, Airbnb, the OTAs, the online travel agencies that are out there that support bookings coming in via leisure and via corporate stays. So we leverage the online travel agents, we approach companies directly in order to take on the business and naturally just offer a, an affordable solution to people coming to the area. Great. So with your units, George, you've got seven of them now. Does that take up a lot of your time in the week? You know, how, how many hours would you say you spend on the operational side of managing those seven units? So I couldn't put an hour on it because, yeah. yeah, I don't know, some weeks is busier than others in terms of bits and pieces though, but you can do nothing. Like when I had COVID before Christmas, I've done nothing and I was all right. <laughs> and, and the business still maintains. Yeah, 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 yeah. So obviously you do have to, there's work to do, but no, it's not. It depends how far you want to take it. If you want to push those direct bookings and obviously time, if you want to push more units, it's time. But if, you're, if you've got to a figure and you're happy, then yeah, they can sort of tick over fairly easy. Okay. So do you do the check-ins and check-outs? No, no, I don't know. No. no. Does someone do them for you or is uh, it a keypad? I've got lock boxes. Lock boxes. Um, yeah, on all of them. Yeah, that's really good, isn't it? Because a lot of people think that running a serviced accommodation rent to rent business is going to literally be like a full-time job obviously it can be if you choose it to be you know what i tend to do in my when i'm finding deals is i just want to focus on deals i want to focus on money and the rest of it 
I want to leverage and outsource that to someone. Obviously, it's good that you get experience in managing your own properties as well, and then you can build a team around you. Uh, but what, what's your view on that, Ross, in terms of the time involved in building this type of business? Can someone do this just initially part-time? How many hours a week does someone need if they're just starting out? Look, I think like with everything, what you put in, you get out. So yeah. the more time you can devote to it, the quicker you're going to get results and the faster you're going to grow. And I'm sorry to sound like a cliche, but that's just the facts. Yeah. Um, now, in regards to like how long does it take to manage a unit? Like my sort of take is, look, initially understand the day-to-day -day operation. Be able to quantify somebody else doing it on your behalf. Now the options you've got on other people doing it on your behalf, you could go with part-time staff, full-time staff, you could go with a VA, you could go with a PA, you could go with a management company, you could just go with you know somebody to help you on the ground. Ultimately, depends on what work you want to put in. Yeah. Like if you're quite happy to do the work initially, grow your business and build as you grow, then yes, a little bit of time will be devoted initially, but that time will soon relinquish and you yeah. can focus on the things that you want to do. So, so how are you set up at the moment, George? Is it just still you in the business? Do you have a team member? Do you have, have anyone in the team? I leverage a cleaner quite a lot, okay. um, but it took me a while to find her. She's, yeah, we're on the same page with a few things like, set up units and things that I don't do anymore, she'd do that. I've got list in place, things like that. I leverage her for other bits and pieces. Um, I think that's it. It's that, well, at the minute for me, it was finding that one person to, yeah. to take away some of them tasks because I was running around dropping linen off and things. That, that's time yeah. cheering. <laughs> but that And make, not that enjoyable no, either, right? No, no, but that makes you want to obviously find that, that person. So, yeah, it's, it's more leveraging that, that other person in terms of, getting someone on. I haven't thought about that yet. I don't know, not too sure I want to take it yeah, really because obviously yeah. taking someone on is more cost and stress, yeah. isn't it? Yeah, I think as you build and grow. So you're on seven now. Uh, what, what would you say has been your biggest challenge? Um, I don't really know. Maybe there hasn't been one. Maybe it's just been, <laughs> no, maybe it's like just been okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, I suppose getting them, originally getting so them. So finding the deals. Yeah, finding that deal, yeah, I suppose. Yeah. But I do, I do quite enjoy that. But yeah, I suppose that is the that was the most difficult part, um, and I I don't enjoy the computer uploading all the onto the OTA, so that that's okay. not really a that's not really a major issue, is yeah. it? Okay, so a few challenges, but again, anything can be, you know, anything worth having, anything worth fighting for, certainly in this high cash flowing strategy where you could be making a thousand to fifteen hundred pounds per month per property, it doesn't take long to get up to 40, 50, 60, 100, if not 200,000 pounds a month net profit. And of course, with that, there's going to be some few challenges and a few ups and downs. Um, how has Ross and the Academy and Assets for Life um, helped you and guided you through your journey? Yeah, so uh, yeah, definitely helped me with some things, especially the first first unit. That, yeah. that was big help. Um, it's just always good and having that bit of support there, especially someone who's done that, usually been through the things a bit more than what I have. Yeah. So yeah, it's hand I like quite like the meetings because like the the regular meetings with the groups because if you're doing like there's nine times out of ten other people are doing as well, which makes I know it sounds selfish, but it does make it a little bit. A little bit bearable, so a bit bearable. <laughs> do you know, I don't. Yeah, yeah, you don't, see I, others yeah. The struggle yeah, the kind of yeah. That you are, I yeah. do enjoy. I, I know it sounds. I do enjoy turning up, and like that's why I come today, just to get to feel what everyone's doing, see what's happening. It's good to see yeah. other people get results. So yeah, um, no, so and it, also, yeah. Well, it, it's good to have you part of the team, you know, and it is a team thing. You know, assets for life is a community. We've got different of all ages, all backgrounds, all levels of experience, yeah. and. You know, obviously you've done amazing. So, you know, well done. So far, so good. You know, seven deals in the portfolio. I, I promise you now, George, that is going to be a massive inspiration to people listening in on this. And, and the fact that you're saying you're going to double in the next 12 months. I should do more than that, but I don't you want should to talk do more. <laughs> <laughs> you've exactly. got some big plans. He will be doubling in the next 12 months, okay? He will be doubling. Everything to on that, he will yeah, be doubling no, at yeah. least. Yeah. To be honest, I, and again, I'm not taking anything away from George here, but you know, George could have doubled the amount of results he's got so far without a shadow right. of a doubt. But like with everybody getting into an industry for the very first time, you need to find your feet, you need to understand it, you know see where the opportunity is and i think that's something that george picked up on really really quickly and he's literally not looked back since wow. in my opinion and also it's about lifestyle as well isn't it 
you know, there's only so much money anyone needs and obviously I love making lots more money but I also want to make sure I've got a good quality of life. I'm a family man, I've got Holly, I've got my four, my four kids. Yeah, you were mentioning just before we went live that you got a few holidays booked, a few skiing trips. Is, is, do you see this as a lifestyle business? Yeah, I suppose so. Yeah, yeah. it's definitely um, yeah, it's definitely something I want to build and Kate, don't know what to do, but definitely something I want to build on. Yeah, brilliant. Yeah, brilliant. brilliant. And do you think one day you'd like to get into owning assets as well? And I think that's a natural progression. That's yeah. already, yeah, I'm already, yeah, yeah. already getting hungry to do that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. We're positioning for 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 the start of that more as a long term game plan because naturally George is generating the cash flow, then he needs to do something with that cash, and that's something you're looking at creative options, like lease options, yeah. and other bits and pieces. So it's a natural progression to start looking yeah. at purchasing the assets. If you could share one or two tips or words of inspiration to anyone tuning in that is looking to start, scale and grow a rent to rent service accommodation business, what would you say to that person? I don't know, just don't give up I suppose. Don't but give up, it should yeah. be the same with everything in life, isn't yeah. it? Well, you, you say that, but and most accept people the nose. do. Accept the nose, I love yeah, that. So nose. anyone tuning in, you're gonna embrace yeah, yeah, rejection. Yeah, yeah. You're not gonna get every investor, you're not gonna get every landlord. You will lose deals literally at the 11th hour. But I always say, and I echo what you said there, George, don't give up, don't leave before the miracle ends. Because what a lot of people do, they just chase the shiny penny. They go from strategy to strategy, to idea, to job, to business, to idea. As soon as it gets a bit tough, they're out the door. They're chasing that next thing. Five years forwards, they've done sweet FA. Um, so I think that's great uh, words of advice. Yeah, well, 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 thanks for coming in, George. It's been, been a pleasure having you on your show. Really, really appreciate your time. I think it'll be great to do a catch up in a year and see, have you gone from seven to 14, which I'm sure you would have done. Yeah, you're happy to come back in a year and, yeah, and do months, a catch up, George? If I'm still here. Yeah, awesome, <laughs> awesome. Great, well, look, thanks for coming in, mate. Uh, absolutely amazing. Uh, Ross, any, any last words from yourself on, yeah. you know, anyone? What, what would you say to people that are looking to get into this? So look, I think, for those of you guys listening to this, you know, sit, sort of sympathising with George's situation, one thing I will say is George is resilient and, and it reminds me very much how I was when I first got into the, the industry. You get one no and it doesn't deter you, you don't let it hinder you, you just focus on getting to that point where you're, you're trying to get that first deal or your first investor and I think his ten being tenacious is absolutely key. Uh, I think the the fact that he's looking to do this to change his life has definitely been the driving factor. Right. And I really do believe that's why he's sat on the deals he's got right now. And to be honest, if we're, if we're both honest, he could be sat on a hell of a lot more than that. But, you know, watch this space, the course of the next 12 months, he'll get to 14 minimum, but I really want him on 20 by this time next year. Wow. Yeah. I'm in. Yeah, great. And, and also, when, when we talk about education, you know, uh, you know, I own uh, the UK's premier property business and wealth training company. Me and you are business partners, Ross. I think we'll be uh, almost three years, uh, coming up to our three years very soon, if not more. Um, what, what is, a lot of people are asking us about the serviced accommodation boot camp. Uh, what is the serviced accommodation boot camp? I'll, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give you the war and peace version, guys. But what it is, is basically 13 years being in this business wrapped up into three days where we go through every single aspect from the setup to, you know, finding the right area to, to how to analyze deals, whether it's externally, internally, financially. You know, we make sure that you know how to identify the opportunities within the good locations. And most importantly, we take you through every aspect on how to go out there and secure it. So quite simply, Simply, if you're willing to put the work in, you're willing to show up and start putting things into action, it's the exact place you need to be to take this opportunity and turn into whatever you want. You know, oh. if you're looking to, um, you know, change your lifestyle, you're sick of lining your boss's pockets, you are, you know, sick of being in the rat race and you want more control over your life, well, this is the perfect starting point. You don't need tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of pounds to get into property like most people are led to believe. You can get in for a very relative entry point and ultimately take whatever you want from this. Wow, awesome. So it's basically you showing them your blueprint, the Whisperer blueprint, taking someone new or experienced from start to finish on how to start, scale and grow a high cash flowing 
property portfolio in this creative property space. Yeah, like guys, I don't need to think that the way I'm showing you is any different to the way I do it myself. Look, I've built a portfolio between six to 800 units at any one point. Um, I've done thousands of deals over the last 13 years in this business. The exact same way I position at the very start when I got into the business, the way I do it now. If it's not broke, don't fix it. And for me, it allows you guys to follow a proven method that works, rinse, repeat, and then take whatever you want. Awesome. Well, great. Yeah, nice one. Well, thanks for coming in, lads. Absolutely brilliant. So there you have it. A great introduction to Ross Malu, my amazing business partner. It was great to have George here. Zero to seven properties in the portfolio, looking to double over the next 12 months. And look, where are you currently at now? Are you in a position, are you working too hard? Are you not earning enough money? Are you in some type of bad debt? Maybe you've got a lot of money, but you haven't got time and you are worried about your financial future. And look, here's the thing, life is for living to enjoy life. And the reality is we just don't know how long we have left. So maybe by watching this video, this is your moment, this is your time, this is your opportunity to do something different in order to get something different. So hey, hit the link below, come to assetsforlife.co.uk, access some free training, join us on one of our up and coming property events. If we can do it, you can definitely do it. If you are new to my channel, smash the subscribe button, give me a like, leave me a comment question below, but whatever you do, make sure right now you watch one of my next videos and I'll see you soon.